Off the streak, top second, bases loaded for Kevin Mintz. Mintz has stopped this. Dialing long distance. Ladder paid for the call. Grand slam, first of his career for Mintz. 388 feet, 4 nothing Texas. Now to the six, Mike Lowell up. Two on, Marlins down by two. Off the wall, Luis Castillo and Carlos Delgado score. It was a 5-5 tie. That chased Rogers, who had retired the first 11 Marlins that he faced. Bottom seven, Alex Gonzalez up. And out off Juan Dominguez. Solo shot his fourth of the year. Marlins come back to win at 6-5. Rangers have dropped five in a row. Roger Clemens getting the start for Houston against visiting Toronto. Clemens won two Cy Youngs when he was nesting with the Blue Jays. He's, he's never won a gold glove in 21 seasons, so let's let him flash some leather. Eric Hinsky, the grounder. Lance Burke from the toss to Clemens. Clemens cuts off Hinsky for the out. Uh, take another look. The arrow. Walk, the arrow is Clemens' glove. He has the ball, and then we go spot shadow. Clemens tags Hinsky before Hinsky's foot hits the bag. See, that's good. That's good, yeah. Clemens nursing a 1-0 lead, top four, and... Greg's on, grounder down the line. Clemens going to take it himself. He, he dives and makes the play. Clemens, seven innings, seven strikeouts, one run. But Brad Lidge blew the save, and Klaus Clemens the win. Bottom nine, game tied, two on, two outs. Morgan Ensberg, 3-0 pitch. Get out! Off Miguel Batista. Astros win it, 6-3. Atlanta hosting Oakland. You know, in a Sports Illustrated survey of Major League outfielders, Andrew Jones was picked number one by his fellow outfielders. He can do it with the glove and the stick. Bottom six, Jones with his second homer of the game. Atlanta retakes the lead after Oakland scored three in the top half of the inning. Very next batter, Brian McCann, the rookie catcher, his first major league home run and only his second game. Now he's 21 years old. He's the youngest brave to homer since 1996. And Andrew Jones, when Andrew Jones was 19 years old, and well, McCann hit his homer. Andrew Jones was his biggest fan as you check out Andrew Jones on August 16th in 1996. And oh, well, McCann's going yard. Look at Jones. That's my dog. You know, McCann was five when Smoltz pitched his first complete game. He calls Smoltz one of his idols. Well, his idol still got something. John Smoltz, 48th career complete game, first in six years, and the Braves win it 5 3. All Nationals have won eight in a row, taking on the Mariners again on Saturday. Frank Robinson's team 22 and 9 at home. Top five, John Patterson pitching to each a row. RBI base hit past Nick Johnson. Mike Morse scores. Each row now one hit away from 1,000. He was one for four with the RBI in this game. Bottom seven score tied at one. J.J. Poots to Jose Guillen with the bases loaded, and he almost hit him. Later in the at bat, Guillen did hit him. RBI single, Tony Blanco scores, and the Nats up two to one. Top nine now, same score, Chad Cordero looking for his 18th save. Two away, Morris up, and he popped him up. Brad Wilkerson says, Wilkerson says, I'll take that. Cordero gets the save. Nats win it two to one. They've won nine in a row now. Phils have also been hot. They've won five in a row, trying to keep that going against the Brewers. Bottom first, Bobby Abreu at bat against Doug Davis. And Abreu says, let's get this party started right. Let's get this party started quickly. Two-run shot, his 16th, and it's 2-0 Phillies. Bottom seven, Brewers up 5-4. Now two on. Ricky Botalico, the former Philly, facing Pat Burrell. Botalico said, I made a bad pitch, and he hit it out. I didn't even turn around. Burrell's 13th, Phillies up 7-5. Top nine now, just in from Detroit. Uget Urbina looking for his first save as a Philly. Gets Lyle over base, swinging on the changeup. Billy Wagner digging it. Next batter is Brady Clark. May I help you? Clark says, no thanks, I'm just looking. Urbina goes on to get the save. Phillies win at 7-5. They won 14 of 16. They were season best seven games over 500. Bottom nine, Mets down a run. Marlon Anderson pinch hitting for Chris Woodward facing Francisco Rodriguez, right center Steve Finley. Chase, dive. No. Anderson, is he wearing his PF flyers as Finley chases it down? He's running third, round and third, and he will be safe under the Benji Molina tag. First inside the park job by a Met at Shea since Daryl Strawberry in 1989. This game is tied, and Anderson will. A little banged up. Top 10, Braden Looper facing Darren Erstad, who's 0 for 4. Two on, two out. Sharp to third, David Wright eats him up. Adam Kennedy scores the unearned go-ahead run. Angels up 3-2. Bottom 10, Carlos Beltran with two on. No outs. He went 0 for 5. Brendan Donnelly got him. Then he got Mike Piazza. And now it's up to Cliff Floyd, who'd struck out in his last three at-bats. And Cliff Floyd says, ball game! Oh, wait. 
That's the wrong side of the foul pole if you're a Mets fan. Let's let's try this again. Cliff Floyd. Better put some body language on it. Yes. Now Cliff Floyd says, ball game. There's a drive. High and deep to right. Way, way back. He did it. And that is the ball game. Mets win it 5-3 on Floyd's walk-off, and they snap a three-game losing streak. Joe Torre's mea culpa Friday night after the Yankees' mistake-filled loss to the Cardinals had an ominous tone to it. Torrey called the 8-1 loss ugly and embarrassing. His comments seem to be the kind you hear from a manager just before he gets booted out the door. But even with New York losing 10 of its last 12 games, George Steinbrenner says he is standing by his manager. Through a spokesman, the boss said he still has confidence that Torrey can lead the Yankees out of their funk, but he added, let's see if he can do it. Well, let's. The Yankees going with Randy Johnson Saturday in St. Louis. The unit doing what he does. Bottom first, gets Sosa Gucci swinging. Bottom second, Margaret Zelanik, same thing. Tony La Russa said the only way we were going to win was 1-0. Bottom third, 1-0 Yankees. David Eckstein gone. Randy Johnson struck out seven. Now he's at the plate with men on first and second, facing Mark Mulder. Over to Abraham Nunez, who said nobody was yelling to throw it anywhere else, so he goes for the... Out on Johnson at first, so the runners advance to second and third, and now Derek Jeter's up, and the Cardinals pay. John Flaherty and Robinson Cano come in to score. Yankees go up 3-0 on the clutch two-out hit by Jeter. Next batter is Hideki Matsui. That's well hit. It'll stay in the yard, but it's off the wall, allowing Jeter to come home. 4-0 Yankees. Joe Torre like, that's more like it. Bottom seven. Units still working. John Mabry swinging. Johnson went seven innings, allowed no runs, gave up just four two-out hits. Bottom eight, men on second and third. Torrey brings in Mariano Rivera with two outs in the eighth. Tony La Russa pinch hits with Larry Walker. Didn't work. Yanks win it five zip. Jeter said he thought New York played with a lot more intensity in this game. Meantime, Cubs hosting the Red Sox at Wrigley Field. Muggy at the friendly confines. Hydration a premium for both players and fans. Bottom five tied at four man on for Nephew Perez. David Ortiz goes to second for the force out on Carlos Zambrano. He left with a strained left big toe. Gave him five hits, four runs, and five innings of work. X-rays negative. Should be ready for his next start. Ninth inning now. Red Sox down 7-4. John Olerud up. Leading off with a double off the wall. And watch this. Off the face of Corey Patterson. Take another look at it. Ooh. Top nine now, Red Sox down 7-5. Kevin Millar hoping Manny can get to work. And he does. Down the line, that'll be good for a double. Edgar into Rio scores, Red Sox down 7-6. Next batter is Trot Nixon. And well, he popped up. Cubs win it 7-6. Ryan Dempster with his ace save in nine tries. Todd Walker and Todd Hollingsworth, three hits apiece for Chicago. San Diego now, White Sox and the Padres. Mark Burley 9-1 and one in his last 14 starts, dating back to last season. Bottom third, Padres down 1-0. Damian Jackson back to the mound. Burley says, give me that. And he throws Jackson out from his knees. We go to the ninth now. Padres still down 1-0. Dustin Hermanson facing Ramon Hernandez with one out. And Hernandez is not ready to go home yet. Solo shot his seventh of the season, game tied at one. Hermanson's first blown save in 16 chances this season. But it would get worse. Three batters later, bases loaded for Damian Jackson. Infield in, White Sox out. Sean Burrow scores the winning run. It's time to bounce in San Diego. Padres win for just the third time in 10 games. Dodgers beat the Twins on a walk-off Friday night. Top six, 4-1 Minnesota for Torrey Hunter against Derek Lowe. Hunter just three for 14 career against Lowe when this ball game began. Uh, that one's not coming back. His 10th, it's 5-1 Twins. Bottom seven, Dodgers down two. Jason Phillips at the stick. We're going to have a legal flashback first to Friday night. Shannon Stewart, well, making a great catch in left field. But look, at he ran into the wall, and that hurt. So back to reality, and Phillips sends one deep to center, and, well, Torrey Hunter continues to defy gravity. Uh, when Glove comes to town, he runs into the wall, is hurt, but this will help heal the pain. 5-3, Twins. Cleveland up four on the aforementioned Jason Schmidt. Grady Sizemore, two for four in this game, scores two with that. 17 for 33 in his last seven games. Schmidt, five innings, six earned. Two outs, bottom nine, one run game. Indians up. Bob Wickman facing Omar Vizquel, who spent forever with the Indians. He works the walk. We've got two on. 
the advance is second and third. J.T. Snow, your Dusty's boys favorite player. Well, he gets dusted. Cleveland takes it 7-6. The Giants three in the bottom of the ninth. Not enough. Tribes fifth win in six games. Tigers and Rockies from Colorado top six tied at four. Jason Jennings facing Brandon Inge. That's back up the middle. Nook Logan coming around and he'll get there. Top eight, six, four Tigers. Preston Wilson at bat facing Kyle Farnsworth. Wilson called out on strikes and a home plate up Ron Culpa throws out Blaine Neal who was in the dugout. Culpa going to let Neal know about it. Neal had to be restrained. Tigers win it by two. In Pittsburgh, but Scott Kazmir was unbeaten in his last five starts. Rough start, though, gave up three in the first, had a rougher fifth. His first problems began with the mound. He complains, gets the home plate up out there, and Carl Spackler's baseball gang went to work. Later in the inning, Brian Domit doubles down the third baseline. Freddie Sanchez, who walked to open the inning, scores. Domit, three RBIs. Pirates up 4 0. Two batters later, Jose Castillo, three run homer. He began this game in an 0 for 18 slump, third of the season. He had a career high five RBI. Bottom eight, Domit at the plate. This time from the other side because he's a switch hitter. He triples the center, two runs score, 20 hits, 18 runs. Season is high for the Pirates, who are now at 500 for the first time since May of 2004. They went at 18 2. Orioles and Reds are in Cincinnati. Baltimore took the series opener 4 3. Daniel Cabrera going to walk Jacob Cruz to load the bases. Next batter is your eighth hitter in the order, Javier Valentin. And well, he walked him on four straight. Adam Dunn scores one nothing Reds, and Lee Mazzelli says earmuffs. B B still in the bottom of the second. Felipe Lopez, bases loaded. Let's get lifted. Lopez launching the grand slam, tenth of the year. That ties him with Ken Griffey Jr. for the Reds' lead. It's five nothing, and uh, Mazzelli unhappy as man Cabrera. Didn't listen to him. Bottom six. Reds up a touchdown. Two on for Lopez. Now against John Parrish. Two run single up Brian Roberts' glove. Lopez, six RBI. The Reds win at 10 1. Brandon Clausen, three hitter. 